Good morning or welcome back. You can see me. How amazing is that? It's a late start for me this morning. We are heading out to do a video that I've been meaning to do for ages. You guys have been asking for it for ages. We're going to go find a quiet spot and uh, get started. So I've tried to do this like six times and uh, every time I go to a quiet spot, I get interrupted. So fingers crossed this morning pays off. Came out to find some peace and quiet and we got kangaroos running through the scene. Morning guys, welcome back. Finally found a nice little quiet spot out in the middle of nowhere. Sorry if you randomly need to go to the toilet halfway through the thing. There's like a running creek in the background. So I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. We're out in the middle of nowhere, so hopefully no interruptions. Today we're gonna to go through all my rods and reels that I've been upgraded to. I am working with Daiwa now. So before you get halfway through the film and be like, I smell a rat, there's a lot of Daiwa gear here. I'm working with Daiwa. All of the gear that I've been upgraded to is Daiwa. First up, we're gonna start with the smallest rods, work all the way through the spins, then onto the bait casters. Here we go, let's get started. First up, we got the brim rod. This is the brim rod I've been using. It replaces the two to six pound mega bass rod that I had paired up with the Shimano Sedona. So this one is a TD Black, two drunken monkeys. It's a 610. I got six pound Daiwa J Braid Grand, the new stuff that they just bought out on there have been using it for a lot of top water little brim brim lures under pontoons oh. yep got him first fish of the morning nah flatty good fight flatty Yep. Oh no, he's around the pole. Ooh, ooh. Oh. At the moment, I got six pound tied on there, but I am going to try and get some four off them just so I can go targeting those big brim. Like I said, excellent little setup for top water. I've loved throwing the splash prawn on there. Yeah. Come back for it. Oh, that's a good one. Big swirl. Big swirls. Because I haven't got any hooks for the splash prawn, I've been trying out the little Eco Gear. Is it PFX or something like that, 55? Just because I was like, oh, they have the assist hooks on the back, I'll give them a go. The only problem is top water seems to be shutting down for the winter, so I'm probably gonna go back to tying some brim lures on there. The big difference between my old rod and this rod, I find is it's got, instead of having the two section butt handle, it's got that uh, EVA foam all the way down to the end. Uh, I used to hold my mega bass rods like that and do my flicking, but I find that the balance of the rod, I end up holding these rods there. So I do a lot of my flicking and top water movements with my hand completely in front of the reel seat. To be honest, I actually find more enjoyable because it feels like I'm doing more finesse stuff. I don't, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've been enjoying having my whole hand in front of the reel seat. It's just a different balance of the rod. The balance is a bit more to the front, so that's where I tend to hold it. But it's actually really nice for top water, getting that hand down, just popping it along, and also like underneath, and you just kind of jiggle in that soft plastic to get that brim bite pretty much dead sticking. So that replaced my Mega Bass two to six pound. I've only used it a handful of times, mostly for top water. As the bigger brim come in winter, I'm probably gonna be using that a heap more. Moving on to the second TD Black rod they sent me. This is the next size up. Oh, I forgot to tell you, that's a one to two kilo. Next rod up is another TD Black rod. This is the 1.5 to three kilo rod. So a little bit heavier, replaces the two to eight pound mega bass rod that I was using with the, what was I using that with? The Caldia, so it was a dial wheel reel anyway. It was a Caldia. Z2500. Moving on to the second one, TD Black Scratchy 702, so seven foot, two piece, LFS. I don't know, oh, ultra light. That's what the letters stand for. So that was ultra light, ultra light, ultra light finesse setup, maybe, and a light finesse setup. The next size up, so 1.5 to three kilos. I've got that paired with a TD Black 3000 D-C, not sure what they stand for. I'm not really the best at this, am I? So also a two-piece, also joining in the middle of the rod. 
I uh, have that with eight pound braid and I normally tie, at the moment, I think I've got a 14 pound leader on there. I was flicking for Dewey's the other day around some heavy structure. Oh, what is that? Oh, oh, no, oh, no, I pulled the hooks. <sighs> with some light jig heads, so this becomes really good for just like the next size up of plastics, like the three inch to the four inch with a light jig head, or up to about a three eighth jig head. Also excellent for top water, again, the same sort of thing, holding it in front of that reel seat and just uh, the little vibes in the holes we were doing the other day for the small school jew. Excellent little rod, got a fantastic backbone on it. So I, you tend to like, it's got a real nice soft tip and then it just starts to load up really quick. Yep. Oh yes. Good fish. That was exactly where I got mine. I didn't even mark any, eh? So it'll be excellent for those school dew, the next size up, Trevally, those light fishing for jacks, excellent bass rod. As bass come back into play, it's bass close season at the moment. We'll probably be getting this rod out for the bass. Loving this, eight pound, oh, snapping the tips off in the trees. Moving on to the third rod is the Hyper, the Daiwa Hyper. 661, so one piece, a lot LFS, light, finesse setup. There you go. I know like I'm probably gonna get it all the way through this and then realize what it actually stands for. This is my least used rod so far and I'll tell you why. It's not because I don't like it, but it is a really, really soft tip and soft blank. So I'm fine that for soft plastics, I used it out at Hins Dam for bass fishing and I find that the tip was just loading up too much even just jigging the plastic. I think this rod would go really well throwing the little crank baits around, like little chubbies and that for brim and flathead. It's not that I don't like it, but I can tell you off the top of my head how many brim crank baits I've got, and the answer is zero. I have none. It's not something I go out and spend $18 on as a little brim crank bait. So I have zero and that's why I haven't used this. I probably should get some because it's a technique that I've never done before and I think the idea of fishing is to become great at all techniques so you can chop and change and know when what works at what time. But no brim crankbaits and I really feel like this rod, it's got, it's really, really soft, would be awesome for that. Flicking along the weed beds with the chubbies or around the pontoons with the crankbaits, it'd load up really nicely. They didn't send a reel for this one, so I've just got that paired up with one of my old reels, which is the Daiwa Surtate. 2510 RPE-H, which is the high speed 25 size reel that Daiwa do in the Surtate. It's the old Surtate, not the new Surtate. And to be honest, if this is a brim crankbait rod, the high speed reel is not the way to go. So that's why this setup is kind of together. It's just sitting it there at the moment until I get some brim crankbaits, which I should get for winter because I really think the brim come on and start crunching those crankbaits in winter. You guys can let me know in the comments down below because I have no idea. Got that paired up with the eight pound Daiwa J Braid Grand. Um, I did have this reel on the 1.5 to three kilo Scratchy. It's also a really nice reel to flick for those school dew. It's got the nicest drag out of any reel I've ever used, these old Surtates. Unfortunately, don't even, I don't even have any footage of me using this rod. If I get some crankbaits, you'll definitely see this rod come out into action, but at the moment. Moving on to the next one, we've got a Daiwa TD0. Now this one is one I was chasing Trevs with, with top water, awesome for those little atomic walkers, uh, sugar pens, great casting along the flats. It's got a little bit of backbone, so I've started using it, flicking those slightly heavier plastics and, um, and vibes for dew coming into winter. Oh, this one's coming apart. Daiwa TD0, seven foot, two piece rod. Now it's a two piece rod, but there's no join in the middle. The join is actually a butt join down here. So this is where the, the rod comes apart. If I can show you. Oh. oh, there it is. Awesome little butt join rod. So you still get that really nice feeling of the blank all the way down to the handle. Hope I put that back in straight. Yeah, I've been flicking uh, with the Jew. I've been flicking from the like the one quarter, three eighth to half ounce with this rod uh, in those deeper holes. And I've got that paired up with the high speed Surtate 3012. Again, one of the nicest reels I've used. Great drag. 15 pound J Braid Grand on there. Uh, and I normally tie anywhere from about a 12 pound leader in the rivers 
all the way to offshore I was tying on um, a 20 pound or 25 pound with this braid on so excellent little setup for trevs jacks and that around the pontoons and then those little school dew in the winter also if you like flicking the holes along the rock walls and that for those flathead uh, with those one quarter ounce jig heads or one six ounce jig heads that's where that rod's going to come into its own did i put that on straight i think i did i've also had this reel paired up with the next rod i'm about to show you which i took offshore snapper fishing the other day this reel i had moved on to my next one up which we'll show you in a second and then i had that surtate on here and i had two snapper setups running when we we're offshore it ended up getting a bird's nest on that one and then i just barred it so that was like the first day we went out there's no footage moving on to the next one it's another td black they're really nice rods i've been really enjoying using them i wasn't ever a big fan of the the whole eva thing i always like a little bit of a join in there but to be honest, I haven't really found much of a difference. The only thing I've noticed in difference is just your, where you're holding the rod. Like I used to hold it like that, but you can see the balance is all out. So that's the only difference I've been finding. And to be honest, I've actually been enjoying holding it in front of the reel seat. It's always good to change your gear up every now and then. It gives you a new, new vigor for fishing instead of doing the same old thing. Next up, we've got the TD Black Hump Head, seven foot, one piece, medium heavy. It's a six to eight kilo rod. Oh, this other one's a three to six. I keep forgetting. That, that one there, the TD0, that's a three to six kilo. This one here is a six to eight kilo. Got that paired up with the new LT Light Tough Caldia 5000, the new sizing they've got out. Nice little EVA knob there. Was using this reel for offshore snapper fishing. Got that paired up with the Daiwa J Braid Grand in the 20 pound. Was using 30 pound litre for the snapper, but also tie on about a 20, 25 pound, depending on where I'm fishing or what I'm fishing for. This one I have used in the rivers, chasing the trevs with the whopper ploppers and that. Excellent top water. That's a good fish. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Ah, oh, you... holy moly. This one's starting to get towards your jack setups, like your 50 plus jacks under pontoons, um, your smaller barra and that sort of thing. This rod would be perfect for. Was using it, uh, got absolutely smoked by a big Trev around some pylons on this setup with the whopper plopper. The only thing I did find not so great about this setup is when I was first using it, uh, I hadn't used it before. This bail arm is so big and they've gone with a shortened stem of the reel that I did notice that my finger, I don't know how it was happening, but my finger was hitting the, um, was there and it actually made it bleed one day but I must have changed my positioning because I haven't had a problem with it since so maybe I was holding it too far forward with the popping of the whopper plopper so that was one thing I did notice but haven't had a problem with it since it was only that first day that I used it that I, I cut my pinky up excellent reel for the, that lighter offshore game or the heavier inshore game so your bigger trevally your jacks your smaller barra that's the rod I'd recommend um, great for top water, those drifting those plastics down. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Yep. Yep. Yes. Oh, that's a really good fish. I'm just going to let him run. Yeah. Six to eight kilos, so plenty of backbone in that if you need some stopping power. That's the first rod that I would recommend anything over a 50 jack in, in trying to pull it out from underneath a pontoon if you're, um, if you're going hard on them and not letting them run. This is the last spin setup they sent me to replace the Saltist X4000 that I had, the high speed, and the Samaki Vanquish. This was to be my offshore rod for jigging plastics and yeah that was pretty much all i was using that one for was jigging plastics offshore it was the rod that i caught all my kingies on and that sort of thing uh did love that setup absolutely love that setup but to be honest this setup 
is feeling exactly the same. I've gone from one setup to the other and I love them just as much. This is a TD Black Nugget. It's an extra heavy seven foot. It is a 10 to 15 kilo rod, cast weight 14 to 50 grams. This is the rod at rod and reel setup that I caught my marlin on. Oh! Oh, there he goes! Oh, wow! Should be able to see him. At the moment, I've got a single hook on there. I was out fishing for brim with Briggsy, and these were the hooks we were using for brim. Uh, that video is on my Patreon. Anyway, so this is the last rod they sent me to replace that offshore setup was the only rod that I had heavy enough that I was like, oh, this, this might do for a marlin. And it worked really, really well. This reel feels really good. I've got 40 pound Jaybray Grand on there. And I normally tie on between a 60 to 80 pound leader, depending on what I'm fishing for. I did put that Caldea 5000 on here as well when I went out snapper fishing as a lighter model, not so, just so I'm not jigging up a 4000 size reel with light soft plastics. So that worked really well as well with, with that. Uh, if you're looking for a snapper rod, a big snapper rod, this would be the one you'd go with, just so you can turn those bigger fish. Again, the same, I'd probably use this for McKingies and that sort of thing. Also the spotty or Spanish fishing, this is what I'd probably use if I was burning, um, burning metals up through the bait columns and whatnot. Don't do it very often, but that's what I have it there for. So that's the marlin setup. This thing is unbelievable. I, I was extremely impressed with how it handled the marlin. I would, however, if I was to ever go marlin fishing again, I use a lot heavier setup just so I didn't put so much stress on the fish. That's the only setup I had in my arsenal at the time. So that's what I went with. So that's the last spin setup I've got for you guys today. Moving on to the bait casters. This is the bait caster they sent up to me to replace the Big Sexy with the, with the Shimano Scorpion. This is my soft plastics around pontoons and I also found it really useful up fishing up north for the Barra in Mondoran Dam with the vibes. It was, had a really nice feel to it. I got the kangaroos coming through again. The only problem was how much more Australian can you get? Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, no. Ah, oh, no. He's got me around the sticks. I got him. I got him. I got him. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Holy moly. Nat. The only problem was I found with this setup was when you started to get up to those big barra over the 80s around the sticks, it's very, very soft and trying to turn them was just not working. So you probably have to go a heavier stick for barra, but yeah, soft plastics and the vibes is what I've been using it for and it's been working really well. Uh, that's my jack setup. It's a four to seven kilo rod. It's a six foot four one piece and it is a uh, medium heavy. Ah, that's what the S stands for, spin, because this one has a B on it. Baitcaster, ultra light finesse spin. Do you like it how my brain just like clicks over and now I've just wasted that whole footage because it makes me look like an idiot? Anyway, so this is a six foot four, so 1.93 meters. I was using a six foot six in the big sexy, so it's not that much different. Really nice, feels really great to cast those soft plastics. Good skip caster, I was finding, but I didn't really use it much because I was doing a lot of the swim baiting for jacks this year. So I didn't get a lot of use out of it, only at the Mondoran Dam with the vibes. As you can see, still got the vibe tied on. We'll probably even try it out for those um, for the dew when I head down south with the vibes as well. Just jigging in those holes, see if I can pick any up, like if I find them on the sounder. Got that paired up with, someone asked me, is it good to go high speed reel for the vibing? I don't think it is. I think you can go the low speed. But the only reason I've got the I've got the Tatula 100, the new one they bought out, it's like the most compact reel they've bought out. It's been my favourite reel since the Shimano Scorpions because the Scorpions were a the Scorpions and the Carados were a really small reel. So this one since then has been my favourite reel just because of how compact it is. It fits really nicely in people with smaller hands. So this is the XS 
the 100 XS, the high speed, it's an 8.1 retrieve. And I've got that with Daiwa J-Braid 20 pound on there. The only reason why I had the high speed on there even for the vibing was because it's meant to be for the soft plastics along pontoons for jacks, which I always like the higher speed so you can really get that burn rate up and get that reaction bite from the jacks. So that's the only reason why the high speed was on there. But I think with vibing, you kind of want the lower speed. That's what I've heard. That's the offshore method anyway. Yeah, high speed for the burning of the soft plastics, but I just never changed it over doing my vibing. Moving on to my crankbait setup. Same deal, I've got the Daiwa Tatula 100. This one here is the H, so the lower. I think they come in three models. They come in an 8.1, a 7.3 and a 6.3. This one here is the slower model and I've got the slower model on that because of the crankbaits. You want to slow retrieve reel with your crankbait. So that's the Daiwa Tatula 100H 6.3 retrieved. I've got 30 pound braid on there. I like to go a little bit heavier with crankbaits because they cost more. Also, you can throw with this rod, You can I've worked out you can throw um, smaller swim baits like those smaller glide baits, the Savage Gear ones or the like the Tribitrel throws that really nice with this rod. So I like to go a little bit heavier just so you're not losing those expensive lures. Got this on a beef stick, a TD Black beef stick. It's a 6 to 12 kilo rod. Fantastic on the barra, great on the jacks with the crankbaits and also such a, like it's six foot, so you can really twitch it down to get those crankbaits dancing. And also, um, I found it great for up twitching those, uh, what do you call it, the jackal squirrels around the sticks for the barra up north. Also has a lot of backbone, a lot more backbone than the four to seven kilo TD Zero rod. Yep, yep, oh, yes. Finally! Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, oh, yes! Oh, 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 good fish. Oh. Gee, don't they pull some string? Woo. If I was to recommend an all-rounder, if you're looking for a jack and barrel rod, it would be this one because I've also thrown the weedless soft plastics on it as well and you could also do the vibing with it as well. So if you're only after one rod, this would be it. It does crankbaits, it does small swim baits, and it also does your soft plastics, your top water. It does it all great. This would be the rod that I'd recommend if you're after one jack and barrel rod. Got the 30 pound j Bray Grand on there and I had up to, I, would, I think I got 50 pound leader on there because the last time I used it was up at Mondrian. Probably would tie 60 pound leader on next time just so I don't lose those bigger ones. Moving on to probably one of my most favorite setups and it's only because of the style that it throws is my swim bait setup. This is an old Tatula rod. I know I've already gone through this. I went through it after my big monster jack on swim baits thing, but it's slightly changed. This is the old Tatula rod and they're bringing out the new Tatula rods this week, I think, or next week. And I can't wait to get my hands on some because I've been really enjoying my swim baits. Got a Chilton swim bait tied on there at the moment because that's what I've been chasing the flatties with. This one here, it's a seven foot six, but I chopped about two or three inches off the butt of the rod. Uh, the butt was just so long. So I'm interested to see how long the butt section is on the new Tatula they're bringing out and whether I would modify it or not. It went from being my least favorite rod I ever picked up to my most favorite, just because it doesn't get caught underneath your shirt. It's not awkward to cast around pontoons. So it's a seven foot six, it's a nine to 15 kilo rod and it throws up to, this is one thing I also hated, was it says instead of throws up to 100 grams or something like that, it says five to eight inch. So that's the only downside of that. But I think they've changed it with the new ones and the, the smaller one they've got coming out throws up to 100 grams, the bigger one up to 220 grams. And then their biggest one, which is like a seven foot nine, throws up to a 250 gram lure. And I'm really keen to get my hands on some of them and give them a test run because I do want to do some cod fishing this winter. So I've got that paired. I went with a bigger, a bigger size reel for the swim bait just so I can fit more, uh, a heavier braid on there because the last thing you want to do is cast out, have that braid snap. I've lost so many lures like that just throwing 30 pound braid. This time I've got 40 pound J Braid Grand on there and it's on a Daiwa Tatula 150H, so the slowest retrieve. 
I think it's the slowest retrieve. Well, it's a 6.3 retrieve. I've got the 40 pound on there and it's a hundred, it's the 150 size just so you can fit more of that that bigger braid on there. It has been absolutely superb ever since I started using it. I've caught some awesome, awesome fish on this rod. Gold Coast Barra, big swim bait jacks in through summer. And then moving on to, I've caught some crack. I already got a 70, I think it was a 72 centimeter flathead on this rod as well. So I absolutely love throwing my swim baits, my bigger baits. It's the technique that just is so addictive. And if you want to, so lots of people ask me about this setup. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got one! No way! No way! Yep. Yeah. Oh, good one! Yes! Yes! Good one, good flatty. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, let him run. Oh, he's rubbing on something. Did he come out? Oh, wow. He's out. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. He's towing me into those pylons. Can't wait to try out the new touchlers, but this is the touchler and swim bait setup I've been using for the last six months. That was 40 minutes of talking gibberish. That's uh, pretty, pretty impressive. I want to show you a couple more things before I finish this video. One is the new batteries I'm using for my electric motors and sounders. My new sounder, I want to show you that. So if you're keen, stick around for that. As far as rods and reels and setups go, we're all done. Welcome back guys. Along with all my rods and reels, I just thought I'd show you my new sounder and my new batteries. I've been running on my boat lately. Starting off with the new sounder. So I'll try and get the shades. So running the, I used to have the hook too. There you go. I used to have the hook too. I'm now running the Elite Ti2 and massive massive difference this thing is unbelievable compared to the old one uh, loving the new sounder so easy to interpret so you know exactly what you're looking at nothing really on the screen i'll show you some screenshots to show you some clarity here we go uh, and the new there we go storage my files screenshot there's some dewies that were coming through in some really shallow water. Move over a bit more, chasing some bait. You can see the um, they don't come up as yellow arches, they come up as solid fish. So there's a heap of school dew chasing the bait through here. Um, next one, that was them going over a little bit quicker. So you can see they're a bit more bunched up. Still some bait up here, solid fish. Um, and then the last screenshot I've got, I keep forgetting to take them, but we got bait up here on the side scan. And then down here, that's the same bait ball. And we've got a couple of trevs rounding the bait up, as you can see with those yellow lines. So it doesn't pick them up super when the trevs are moving quickly, it picks them up sort of just those arches. So loving the new sounder. It's a massive upgrade from the hook two unit and have really been enjoying it. Along with the sound upgrade, I've had new batteries for the boat. I used to run two lead acid batteries at 100 amp hours each. So I was roughly about 50 to 52 kilos of batteries in the boat, which I didn't mind, like the boat was all right with it. But I've finally decided to go to lithium. Give you guys a quick little look at the lithium batteries I'm running. So instead of a 100 amp hour for the sounder, I'm now running a 12 volt, 17, and a half amp hour battery. Uh, it's in a fully waterproof container, FPV power. They make them for kayaks. So they're light as a feather. It's probably about 500 grams that. Uh, I'll put this in the container with a bit of padding just so, because this bounces around a bit. So that's why I did that. But fully waterproof container, waterproof connections. So that runs my sounder. 
up the front there. Out of a 17 and a half amp hour battery, you're looking at about eight hours of runtime on your sounder. That's what I found out up at the dam. That's a good little unit, that one. Put that there, that was glued to the wall, but the sicker flex didn't hold. I should have put some bolts in or something, but that was like that. But now that just hangs down there. That's the battery I'm running for the sounder. It's been working awesome. Charge time is around, I think, six hours with, this, with the charger, which isn't too bad, so you just charge it overnight. I just charge it after not overnight after every session. Then moving on to the main batteries for the trolling motor. I've got that on spot lock at the moment. Look at the water clarity. Crystal clear this morning. I'm going to give you guys a look at the trolling motor batteries I've been using for the last, uh, probably the last three months now. Check this thing out. I used to have 200 amp hour uh, lead acid batteries in there. I always cooked the batteries because I ran them flatter than you should. With lead acid batteries, you shouldn't let them go any lower than 50%. And I was doing a lot of fishing and I was pretty much running them flat every day or two. So after three or four months, I was completely cooking the batteries. Finally decided to upgrade and went with the lithium. Again, from FPV Power, I'll leave a link in the description to their videos. But what we've got here is two 50 amp hour lithium batteries joined together in series. So 100 amp hour in total. You can push your little on buttons and see how much charge you've got left. So that whole unit there, replacing the 200 amp hour batteries, I've got 500 grams in there. That whole unit weighs seven kilos. So really big weight difference. Look at that, easy to take out and transport to the charger or whatnot. Sits perfectly in my boat there. Up at Mondrian, I was getting about 12 hours of run time out of these batteries, and that's running them all the way down. You can run lithium batteries all the way down to 10%. These batteries also come off with a shut-off mechanism, so if you're running them too low, they'll shut off to protect the batteries. FPV Power's main priority has been safety, so all the lithium batteries that come uh, in a waterproof container, so they're all waterproof and water-sealed. Uh, excellent for your boat. So that's why I went with those ones. 50 amp hour each. So if you're looking for a, for a really light battery for your kayak, or for a little trolling motor for your kayak, highly recommend these. You're looking at three and a half kilos each, 50 amp hour, and that'll keep you going for what, six hours. So far for the last three months has served me really well. So yeah. So that's everything in the way of new equipment for the channel that I've kind of acquired over the last couple of months. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give them a big old thumbs up. Any questions, drop them down below and I'll try and answer them. If not, all the links and stuff will be in the description for all the equipment that I showed you today. Thanks for checking it out.